Yeah, um, so in mysticism, you have that that emphasis on direct experience, mm-hmm. personal experience of the divine. Mm-hmm. In other words, you're not waiting for the, the priest or the teacher to instruct you. Mm-hmm. You're seeking that in yourself, in your own psyche, in mm-hmm. your own mind, through your own vision. Mm-hmm. And that is very powerful, of course. Mm-hmm. And not everyone is seeking that. But within cultures, within traditions, you always see that somebody had to do that part. Mm -hmm. Somebody needed to do that. Otherwise, the culture, the tribe would not have that connection to the divine. Mm -hmm. And So So it had to be put in an organizational fashion. Yes. uh, Within culture, in order to be useful, it it had to be uh, communicated in some way or another Mm -hmm. through ritual, Mm -hmm. through myths, uh, through the philosophies and then meeting in the community like a group meeting of yeah and common th- common people and yeah and know. there you see the birth of religion mm-hmm. that then it becomes about enacting uh the ritual over and over mm. and then if as people forget then usually reformers would come along and say wait a minute we've forgotten what the what why we do these things mm-hmm. and bring new elements into into the organization. So is Young a reformer of psychology in a way? In a way, yes. And Jesus was a reformer of the Jewish religion. Yeah, and Buddha was a reformer of, of the Brahmic uh, religion, mm-hmm. the old Vedic system of mm-hmm. uh, temples and rituals. But I love the uh, question that Young, they asked Young late in life, it was like one of his last interviews, they said, so after all this work, do you believe in God? And he said, I don't believe, I know. (laughs) And that's really the difference with, um, like what I said, this kind of belief in something. Mm. I believe in something. Everyone talks about like changing their beliefs, but you have to change your knowing. And it's like, it goes from that head, I believe something and it makes rational sense. And I kind of want to believe this to where you're really embodying it in your heart. You're really feeling that there's no question. There's like a certainty. And I think that's the really the, the journey of the, the mysticism can bring us from higher concepts and, and reading books and understanding uh, theories to actually embodying them and, and practicing them in a deeper way. Yeah. Yeah, and, and today you see a lot of clergy, uh, priests, and, and uh, uh, people in, the, in, in uh, priestly roles when they want to study psychology, they study young mm-hmm. because he's the only one that really goes that deep mm-hmm. into the religious symbolism of the psyche, of uh, visions and dreams. Uh, so uh, spiritual psychology without young, it never made sense to mm-hmm. me because uh, how can you do that? Mm-hmm. You know, he is the basically the source for us now. And so you have some new, uh, some ideas about. Um, that th- we went direct exper- di- spiritual experiences. A direct experience. Uh, also, you see it in uh, uh, this uh, monk that Jung uh, talks about a lot, uh, Meister Eckert, oh, who's yeah. a German um, mystic, mm-hmm. who emphasizes that the ground of your being, your individual being, is identical to the divine Godhead. Mm. So what he's emphasizing there is that... Um, you, you find that spiritual truth within you, not within the scriptures, mm. not within the institutions. There's nothing wrong with the institutions. Obviously, he, he himself was a monk and participated in, in the rituals and traditions. But you have to, if you want a, a real spiritual experience, you have to find it within yourself. It's uh, like you said, the difference between knowledge and wisdom Mm. is that knowledge is, again, you can understand things, but the wisdom is really that embodiment of it. 